What can you hear? But you should be able to hear this one, unless you have it muted. See, you can mute the video independently on your end, but it takes both of us working together to keep the sound on. But what's actually happening when the sound is on? Like, why can you hear stuff? And what sounds can't you hear? I intend to at least partially answer those questions in this video along with the following three. Why do different instruments sound different even when they're playing the same note? What does this humidifier have to do with sound? And how do active noise-canceling headphones and earbuds work to eliminate background noise? We've got a lot to cover in this video, so let's get started. Listen to this. First things first, before we talk about sounds you can't hear, we need to talk about what sound is. Like, why can you hear me? Why would you want to? Don't answer that. And I want to start from the angle of you watching this video and being able to hear my voice. For that, we're going to need to think about what is happening digitally and mechanically inside of your device. And it all starts with something called a waveform. You've probably seen waveforms before, and what I'm showing on the screen right now is actually the waveform that represents the sound of my voice talking in this clip. But how squiggle becomes sound? Waveforms all by themselves are useless, like building instructions when you have nothing to build with. Waveforms need speakers in order to become useful, whether like this Bluetooth speaker, or headphones, or earbuds of some description, or a built-in device speaker. Regardless of the type of speaker or its specific design, they all have one thing in common. They're vibrators. They vibrate. The vibration inside of a speaker is intended to push and pull on a part called a diaphragm. This particular speaker has two big diaphragms and two little ones. But back to waveforms. The waveform is essentially is blah. The waveform is essentially instru is essentially essentially why did I say that wrong? Felt wrong when I said it. The waveform is essentially instruction. <laughs> it still, still sounds wrong. The waveform is basically instructions for the speaker that tell it how to move the diaphragm. And when the waveform goes up, it's telling the speaker to push the diaphragm out. And when the waveform goes down, it's telling the speaker to pull the diaphragm back in. And this back and forth motion can happen thousands of times per second, which is faster than I can blink. And if you want to know more about how speakers turn these electrical signals into back and forth motions, you can check out my last video. It does not explain it, but it might get you one step closer to understanding. Now I want to focus on what happens when the diaphragm is moving. For instance, when the diaphragm is pushed out, it pushes on little air particles that are directly next to it. Those air particles in turn push on the air particles next to them, which push on the air particles next to them, and so on and so forth. And this just keeps happening until that signal has left the diaphragm of the speaker and made it all the way to your ear. That's super weird. That sound is essentially just a chain reaction of teeny tiny wiggles. Obviously when I'm talking about earbuds, the sound doesn't have to travel very far, but the principle still applies. And of course, this doesn't just happen with speakers. It happens with anything that makes a sound you do anything that makes a sound, it sets off that same chain reaction. That was a beautiful bird sound. I don't know if you could hear that. I think it's a purple finch. I could be wrong. Once the signal makes it to the inside of your ear, the vibrating air particles wiggle these little bones inside of your ear called ossicles. They send a signal that your brain reverse engineers and creates the experience that you know as sound. The faster the vibration, the higher pitch sound we hear, and the slower the vibration, the lower pitch sound that we hear. And that's really how different notes in music work. But it doesn't really explain why if you play a note on a guitar, and then play that same note on a trumpet, they sound different. And I got really curious about why. So I loaded up the waveforms for both of these sounds. This top one is the trumpet sound and this bottom one is the guitar sound. And it gets really interesting to me if you zoom way in, they look completely different, but both of them are repetitive. You kind of have this same shape happening over and over again in the trumpet waveform and the same shape happening over and over again in the guitar waveform. And if you look at how long it takes to get from this peak to this peak in the trumpet one, you'll see that that is the same amount of time that it takes to get 
to a repetition in the guitar one. And that is what makes it the same note, but it's all of these fine details in the middle of the repetitions that your brain can actually pick up on and decipher and give it a different sound despite it being the same note. Now I think we know enough about what sound is to start talking about sounds that you can't hear. And instead of just smoothly transitioning into my next point, I'm just gonna get a glass of water. If you shake water hard enough, some of it will come loose and fly around. And that seems like a really silly thing to say, but it's basically the theory behind how some humidifiers like this one work. It's not boiling water. This mist is very cold. Instead of boiling, it is essentially shaking the water. The part that does the shaking is inside of the base and it's right here. And if you happen to be thinking, well, golly gee, that looks quite a bit like a speaker diaphragm, it's because it basically is. This part vibrates and sends pressure ripples through the water that are intense enough to essentially knock some of the water molecules loose and give them a chance to float around in the air in the form of mist. But if that part in the base is vibrating and it's basically a speaker, then what sound does it make? That is a secret sound that our ears won't let us hear. And that hurts. Like 1.7 megahertz. A hertz is a unit of measurement that tells you how frequently some repeating thing is happening. One hertz means once per second. 1.7 megahertz means 1.7 million times per second. That vibrating piece inside of this humidifier is going back and forth 1.7 million times every second. And that is way too fast for our ears to be able to pick up on it. The normal human hearing range is considered to be something between 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz, which means 20 vibrations per second, up to 20,000 vibrations per second. 1.7 million is way outside of our hearing range, and anything above 20,000 vibrations per second, or 20 kilohertz, is considered ultrasonic, which makes this an ultrasonic humidifier. <laughs> and the word ultrasonic sounds like it should be something way cooler than just sound you can't hear. If something is an ultrasonic device, it means that it is producing ultrasound. And you've probably heard the word ultrasound used in a medical context. It has to do with a device that you can use to spy on unborn babies. To put it simply, a medical ultrasound device is basically a combination of a speaker and microphone in the same device that's dealing with sound in the megahertz range, so it's way beyond what we're actually capable of hearing. And those sounds are played into the body. They echo off of stuff inside of the body and then get picked up, which sounds like complete sorcery. But that basically makes it a fair thing to say that this image of my son from before he was born is just a visual representation of an inaudible echo. And that's messed up. But now I want to come back down out of the ultrasound range and back into the range of normal human hearing. What about sounds that you can hear but don't want to? Is it possible to essentially mute reality? I mean, one kind of sort of option is to just plug your ears, but that's not complex enough to be interesting. To truly neutralize sound, we basically have to find a way to stop an air particle from vibrating before that vibration makes it into your ear to be perceived as sound. Consider a moment in time where a sound is causing an air particle to be pushed forward by a certain amount. If theoretically we could introduce a second sound that would instead pull on that air particle by the same amount but in the opposite direction, the push and the pull would cancel each other out, the air particle would not move, and there would be no sound anymore. Believe it or not, this is exactly what active noise cancelling technology is designed to try to accomplish. These active noise cancelling headphones and earbuds use tiny little microphones to record the ambient sound around them, and it generates a waveform that represents the ambient sound. It pretty much just makes a copy of that waveform, flips it upside down, and then plays the inverted sound directly into your ear. And it turns out that whenever you have some original sound wave or waveform, and then you play the inverse of that that same wave at the same time, they just cancel each other out and the result is complete silence. At least theoretically. I don't think that there are any actual headphones or earbuds that can accomplish this completely perfectly, but the little guys are just trying their best. Anyway, that's all that I had for this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.